guys, welcome back to Rice Camera Action. I'm your host as always, Jeff Gaudet, talking with a bunch of the entertainers in Asia and getting to know more about the scene and their personal experiences. Uh, I'm joined with my friend today. Please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Roman from Australia. Yeah. So okay. uh, I've been in Korea for 12 years now. Yeah. So I've known Roman actually for, yeah, it's since I switched from like teaching English Geez, like seven years ago, he was already like yeah, in the entertainment field, oh, wow. doing some yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I was, and then, uh, but like he, he's been my, he was my elder. He gave me all the advice when I was learning about the industry. Oh wow! I yeah. didn't know that. Oh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So like, yeah, he was my elder because also Roman speaks Korean very well. Yeah. So he was actually like he would be on panel shows and he did a bunch of movies with that. Together, we did yeah. it together. Yeah. Yeah. No, he was like comedian friend. Yeah. So anytime we did any comedy, and that's yeah. my favorite genre. I love yeah. doing comedy. I hate yeah. doing serious things, and I've always said no to most serious things. Yeah. Uh, but anytime I do comedy with Jeff is like really fun. Well, the the shitty thing about Korea is they don't really focus on a lot of the comedy or like the, even the style of comedy is different from the Western. There is a little bit that one right. that you did that oh, commercial which... that you did. Oh, oh, like the game the commercial? Game commercial. That was perfection. That was like the best, you know, the office style humor. Ah, uh, yeah. So, and it was so subtle and so nice. Oh, uh, so what, well, yeah, it was, so uh, I know what you're, it was a game commercial. It was called like Grand Saga. And uh, basically, like, uh, they got a Korean celebrity, uh, Han Jong Un, to be like a, Han Jong -un, yeah. yeah, to be the spokesperson. But then, yeah, like it's actually like a 10 minute commercial. But, yeah. yeah, and it's very much like the office type humor. Yeah. And so uh, I feel like the other foreigners missed yeah. the style of humor they were going for. And you really like yeah. leaned into it. Yeah. It's, uh, well, like, yeah, it's like just the cut that I put on my Instagram was just like. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm, just, I'm just adjusting my little pinky finger. No, I could tell you straight away picked up that this is like the office style yeah. humor. Yeah. There's like documentary scenes, everything like that. But I feel like the other, a lot of the other like actors and yeah. stuff like that, even Korean actors, were like yeah. sort of missed the point. Yeah, yeah. But it was, but I think it was perfectly done. Yeah, yeah. I, I, well, we didn't know it was kind of really like an office style commercial. Yeah. Like, so, like, yeah, it was by, uh, the concept was like a foreign, uh, advertising team comes in and they basically just butcher the game commercial by making it and not including the main actor. Yeah. And then there's behind the scenes, like, shaking, the director shaking and yeah. all that. And he's like really depressed and yeah. things like that. Because, yeah, anyway. Yeah, well, yeah. The, well that was a fun one. Um, but, yeah, so uh, t so actually I invited Roman today, too, because sadly he's he's actually left the scene during, like, during the pandemic. I'm taking a break. Oh, now. he's taking a break right yeah. now. Yeah, so he, well. So actually, he went to the July now. last year. Yeah. I got, I did Running Man. Yeah. And I did. Oh, fuck. Yeah. And then I did it and I wasn't even expecting to do it, but I had already organized uh -huh. to go to the States for yeah. another shoot. Yeah. And so after I did Running Man and then while I was in the States for the next six months, yeah. like pretty much all of last year, yeah, two or three times a week, hey, can you come do this shoot? Can you do this movie? Can you do this? Oh, really? Commercial? Yeah. And I was just like, oh, why am I here? Oh, no. But in the end, it turned out well because I like. I had so much fun in America. Yeah, yeah. And I'm Australian originally. So yeah. I've never been to most parts of America. Okay. So I got to see like actual American lifestyle, mm -hmm. learn what Trader Joe's is. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw Halloween pumpkins for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, real? Like, yeah, real massive pumpkins like this. Okay. And I was taking photos of it. Uh, uh, had barbie real bar not like American, uh, yeah. bar American barbecue. Oh, what is it called? Southern barbecue. Southern barbecue. Yeah, I had southern barbecue well, like ribs. Each, each state is different. Yeah, but uh, yeah. okay. I had the barbecue in Atlanta. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, then I moved to San Fran. Yeah. And then I had all this Bay Area. Okay. Food, San Jose, San okay. San Francisco, yeah. and yeah, it's like. I really enjoy it. It's yeah. really good. Cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, so, um, just because now, like I said, you're my my senior, my you're my, I'm your just your Padawan, and you're my Jedi Master. Oh, no. uh, uh, can you tell me, like, uh, like what great experience, like great, what's like the best thing, the best experience that you had uh, in Asian entertainment? Probably Korea, right? Um, 
my favorite memories. Yeah, one of them was I did a singing show, mm -hmm. and uh, I had I was so it was a show where they just show your face. Yeah, and they have to guess based on your face and your looks okay. whether you're a good actor or a bad actor, uh, okay. whether you're a good singer or a bad singer. Okay. And then they looked at and looked at me, and they said, "This guy's a bad singer. Get out here!" Yeah. And then they like, you know, eliminated me. Yeah. So I had to come out on stage and just and show my singing skills. Yeah. And so I showed my singing skills, and I was sing a bad singer. Uh, you were? Did you do a Korean song? No, I did "Payphone" by Maroon Five. Oh my god! Yes, okay. it's a hard song as well. Yeah, um, but the, my favorite memory was that that's just like I mean, a lot of people go through that same yeah. scene and everything like that. Yeah. But then you have to do like a quick interview afterwards because they want to see who you are and mm -hmm. things like that. And I, for about 20 minutes, yeah, I managed to make, because there was an audience of like 200 people, mm -hmm. there's all this uh, staff of like 50, 60 staff, and then yep. there was all these celebrities all around. Yep. And I managed to make them all laugh continuously for 20 minutes. Fucking And man. I made like, it was like the you know, the best stand up comedy ever. Yeah. But I wasn't even I was just being completely serious just yeah. myself. Yeah, yeah. And then like they You're answering earnestly and like from the heart. It wasn't... I was being like slightly, you know, Australian style, okay. sarcastic sort of thing. But we made the audience laugh so much yeah. that the director had to like cut. Okay. Because they were laughing so much that we couldn't continue with the interview. And then we had to like wait for them to calm down, wait five, ten minutes, and then go back into it and then roll the cameras again and then yeah. go again. Yeah. And then it was just and then I thought the audience were like paid to laugh. Mm. And I'm like, what kind of reaction is this? Okay. And then I left the stage and then yeah. after I finished my interview, left the stage and then all the celebrities ran up to me, all the stuff. They're like, we've never seen anything like that. What? Yeah. We've never seen anyone that can make those yeah. people laugh. And so normally Roman doesn't really look like this. He had, he, he was apologizing for his scruffy hair and hat. I'm like, wearing a hat to hide. Yeah. Yeah. So, but norm, like when him and I would uh, be on set together, I uh, normally had more of like a business look, like he had like well, short, well kept hair, yeah. some product in it. But yeah, like, so he's apologized. So they just saw like kind of this, uh, yeah, this Australian guy yeah. that looked very nice and was a bad singer. But uh, the question, that's the th what you're just describing, actually, it just brought up like on a, like a lot of uh, the foreign talent that speak Korean very well, they have no personality. Yeah. So that's maybe, do you think in that's- In Korean, it's called Yeno Entertainment Yen. School. Yeah. So like, um, there's this thing called like Bang Song Yong Mint. Mm -hmm. It's a, something you say, but it's only for the sake of the show. Yeah. So, for example, you have like um, talk shows. Mm -hmm. And you know how there's a lot of talk shows in yeah, Korea yeah. and there's lots of them in Korean and things mm -hmm. like that. So, you that will say, What is the opinion of your country yeah. in this situation? Like what, yeah, what food? And, and you're like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, well, what, yeah, what do Australians think about this situation? I don't know. Yeah, it's just well, it's oh, even though it's supposed to be a natural environment, the the atmosphere feels very scripted and yeah. yeah. But see, but one of the things is if you want to make it entertaining, mm -hmm. you don't you don't just say the same thing that everyone else is saying. Right, you can oppose them. Yeah, you can just say the opposite. Right, you mean like. Uh, and you can see that in lots of Korean shows. Mm -hmm. So you see, like, everyone saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, this food is delicious or something mm -hmm. like that. And one person will say, no, it's not that delicious. Yeah. And then just by him saying, that's not that delicious. And then everyone's start, starting to argue yeah. with him. Even though he really thinks it's delicious. Mm -hmm. He just does it for the sake of the show. Right. And yeah. so then people start debating about how delicious this really is. Mm -hmm. And it adds so much more content okay. to the thing. Well, I feel like like a lot of the foreigners, when they're, like, on these talk shows, they have more... They, they have like fixed sentences so they've they, they it's, it's all scripted it's all scripted and they just have like stock answers yeah maybe. so then the skill is to like insert your own ad yeah. lib and improv into the sentences yeah but yeah so like there's like a lot of foreigners speak very like i i often get i'm people assume that my korean is very poor because i don't use like stock sentences like uh, like sentences that are uh like i just come up with it on the fly and so it, it sounds somewhat broken somewhat awkward to the native ear but it's like actually like this is a true sentence and all that yeah one time i had to do a show and then gave me a full script mm -hmm. and we had to memorize and go into uh, go to the show and there was mm -hmm. three other foreigners mm -hmm. i got to 
set, we started filming, mm -hmm. and the other foreigner said all my lines. Yeah. Because he memorized everything wrong. Oh, fuck. And then yeah. I was like, oh my God. And then they were like, oh, so Roman, what's your opinion? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God. He he's, said all my lines. So I had to completely improv okay. from beginning to end. And then I ended up getting much more, like, yeah. More Credit. like yeah, like it's more camera, more yeah, a lot more screen time, mm -hmm. a lot more camera than all the others mm -hmm. combined. Mm -hmm. And then they invited me to the next show as well, yeah, because it was it sounded more natural being yeah. improv. Yeah, I mean, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Like what is that? Uh, what is that? The improv like hook chung. Uh, what is it? Chukung hat. Hook chukung harida. Oh, no, I get the character. Say, no, but normally we say like Devondero, yeah, like Devon Devon script. From, yeah, 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 by from the, the script. By the script, yeah. Yeah, but then if you just like go off the script, yeah. they normally the like Korean. Jokung Jokida, yeah. Yeah, but normally the Korean MCs are good enough to be able to like play along with you. Yeah, but yeah, also like the script is just a guideline. You don't have to actually follow it verbatim. Yeah, yeah. but as a foreigner, yeah. you try to memorize as much of the script as possible mm -hmm. so that the sentence are natural to your right. mouth. And then you just pick a time mm -hmm. to say some of these lines. If yeah. you don't get the chance, you don't, you don't have to say it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, but if you don't have the script, yeah, it's harder to sound natural right. and fluent in in most of the Korean shows. Yeah, I, well, I just did like kind of a, a it's like a drama, a, well, like a talk show drama, and it was a recreation. And like and they had uh, two uh, university professors on that uh, like teach like evolution. And then they had uh, two Korean celebrities asking the questions. And then most of the Korean celebrities just had, yeah, the, their guidelines, their data, data, uh, just to actually like um, lead them into asking the questions for the professors yeah. and then the professors just had like oh yeah dot 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 and they would just teach it but yeah but i mean my so like if i had a tip it's like if you do those shows mm -hmm. and there's another foreigner mm -hmm. who's like saying oh canada has a food called poutine yeah and it's, it is made out of cheese and then i would inter or me i would recommend you know interrupt yeah, and just yeah. say hey where do you think has the best poutine in yeah, canada yeah, yeah. And then normally they will like they will have their own opinion on this, yeah. and then they will like get more excited, mm -hmm. and then they'll go, "Oh yeah, obviously Montreal has the best poutine." Yeah, you know we I bake into the thing, I mean, and then they get are... excited. I don't know if this is true. Yeah, well, these the, uh, uh, kind of that's where poutine is uh, originates from. But these <laughs> uh, these questions also like are the questions that you take like at a midterm or a final. Like, a, a speaking exam when you go to these language Korean schools, so it's already set you up for the like answering these typical questions. Like, how's the, the thing weather? Is, we have to remember, yeah, especially us as yeah. comedians, yeah, that this is for entertainment. Yeah, someone's waste is wasting their time watching this. Yeah, not wasting their time, but you know they 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 want to be they should be entertained. Mm -hmm. So you should uh, add something interesting to it. Mm -hmm. So there's so much that. It's interesting about poutine, for yeah. example. Yeah. And I didn't even know it was from Montreal originally yeah. and things like that. And that's like really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. But if that's not in the script, then you can bring it out in mm -hmm. other people. And that adds to the whole show. Yeah. And then they normally... So one of the things that they don't really say, even in Hollywood, yeah. is that you don't have to impress the director. Yeah. You don't have to impress the audience. Yeah. You have to impress the editor. Yeah. And then you're fighting for screen time. Mm-hmm. So at the end, you get the show and it's like, there'll be like five people. Mm -hmm. And if you had the most screen time, mm -hmm. you want that show. That's, yeah, like, that's the way that you're supposed to think of it as a business. Yeah. So you want to be able to make it the most, uh, mm. you want to have like the most entertaining content. Right. Uh, you remember like Abnormal Sub, like yeah. Bijong Song, Bijong Song Hei Dom. Yeah. And like, I heard that even that like, the, how long was the program? Like, like the uh, like how long? The show itself was, was one hour. Yeah, but they would film for like five, six, seven, eight hours. Yeah, like I heard that first they would get the concept, the the discussion point a week before. Then they, on one day, they would all meet up together. Yeah, film like the eight hours. So they would get the questions. Yep. So the shoot is on Sundays. Yep. They'll get the questions on Tuesday night. Okay. And then. By within two hours, you have to answer the questions. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you have to type in. So I'll say like, um, what what country is Putin from? Yeah. What's your most 
delicious flavor? Why yeah. is it so popular? Mm -hmm. And I'll ask you questions like this, and you have to answer all in Korean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you send it back to them before midnight. Yeah, I, yeah, I've done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have a questionnaire. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're like really sensitive to your time, yeah, you won't get far in the industry. We, yeah. But then uh, they'll uh, work. They'll take your questions, mm -hmm. and then they'll correct all the Korean, mm -hmm. and they send it back to you. Mm -hmm. Then on Friday, they'll send you the whole script of everyone's answers okay. and then make it look like a proper like movie script. Yeah. And then you have like one or two days, one, one and a half days to memorize mm -hmm. as much as you can. Yeah. Then you come in on Sunday. Yeah. You film it all over like five, six hours. Yeah. It used to be longer, like eight hours, or mm -hmm. nine hours. Then the people who couldn't do their parts yeah, stay they're... back. Yeah. And... They're by themselves in the studio. Everyone's going home. And then they have to say their lines like this and pretend they're still in the studio. Yeah, yeah. And then they'll edit that in so you look fluent. Yeah. If you still couldn't do it, right, yeah. then you stay back and you read from the script like this. And then they'll voice, you, over. they'll voice over. Yeah, yeah. That's what I heard. So even though it's like, yeah, like the program only t is on like each episode's like an hour. There's like four days at least. So you have to, you're given, you're given, you're given the assignment. Then you show up to the... You show up to the the important day when you, everyone's together. Then, if you fuck up, then you have to come in the uh, the third day to have your solo shots, just like the close ups. Only on you trying to do your lines again if you made a mistake, and still on if you still are like flubbing up, then you have to come in again for a fourth day and do the voiceover. Yeah. So and let, well, someone's like like someone's listening to you talk. You just you have to like. They have it, the camera on someone else. Yeah. You're doing the, you're reading it verbatim from the script. Yeah. So they, that's why a lot of them, they look fluent on yeah. the show, but then they weren't able to ever do any other show. Yeah. Yeah. They were invited on. They weren't able to like have a conversation. Mm -hmm. They weren't, they weren't able, they were just, they weren't able to like yeah, perform they on yeah. camera without having everything scripted for right. them. And then on that show, the, mo the people who became the most famous were the ones who went off script mm -hmm. and then were able to like interject. And like Tyler. Like Tyler. And he'll be able to like go back and forward and mm -hmm. debate things. Mm -hmm. And um, and they were adding that entertainment factor to the yeah. show. Yeah. yeah, I remember like in the later episodes too, like the stronger people, they were like t there was like three strong people. Tyler. Uh, I can't... Yeah, Tyler was one of the originals. Yeah. And then, and then as soon as they left... And then they went to season two. Yeah, there was a lot less. Um, yeah, a lot less entertainment. Yeah, so yeah. When it was like back and forth discussion, they they like the host would be like, oh, okay, we know so and so and so is just gonna kind of control the conversation too much because they're Koreans much better than the other foreigners. Yeah. So why don't Tyler and you two take a break while we ping pong back and forth? And yeah. So there was. Um, yeah, and then we'll talk about my favorite memories. Yeah, my second most favorite memory was we met. I started at midnight with yeah. a shoot. Yeah, and it was a live stream. Okay. Yeah, and there was like Twitch here, yeah. YouTube here, you know, Africa TV here, and there was like so six cameras, and it was okay. just me and this guy. And the guy is a celebrity. Mm -hmm. His name is Gust. Okay. And he's like really popular in Korea, mm -hmm. and there was a hundred thousand people watching live. Okay. And then I was like, well, what is this? And he goes, oh, we invited you here today to talk about uh, soccer in Australia. Okay. And then I was like, oh, okay. It would have been nice to know before yeah. I came. <laughs> and then, well, luckily you have the, the talent that you could just, you know. But they were like going through all the foreigners to talk about all the different countries yeah. and things like that. But we, me and Gumps were able to like play off each other so much mm -hmm. that the... Uh, the views kept going up and up and up. Oh, wow. Okay. Instead of going down. For most people, it went down to like 30,000 or 20,000, mm -hmm. but we went up to like 300,000. Oh, wow. And then um, they took that footage and then they made an episode out of it and they put it on SBS, on soccer shows and things like that. Oh, wow. Okay. So and then came a clip like if there's a World Cup or... Yeah, so they made all that kind of thing. And then... Um, but, but the reason it was my favorite memory is because there was... You know how there's like the chat rooms on the mm -hmm. screen yeah like exactly. kind of cool, yeah. yeah and then um for most people just like really quiet you know mm -hmm. like one or two people send a message or things like that even though there's like hundred thousand people 
But when me and him were like joking around, <laughs> it just went like. <laughs> you couldn't even yeah, you couldn't even read all the stuff. Yeah. You know? But then like they they had the team of writers on the mm -hmm. on the site, and they was they were supposed to be like answering messages and doing mm -hmm. everything like that. But it just blew up so much that mm -hmm. they couldn't like reply, and they just like lost control of the whole chat. Yeah. And yeah, we just kept like playing around like that the whole cool. night. It was just like super like super good. Yeah, like, oh, wow, it's amazing that you got this much, uh, like, pe 300,000 people. 300,000 or something. And still, you like, oh, man, but uh, I'm surprised you're not, like, a big celebrity. <laughs> uh, I think one of my main problems is that every single time, they've got yeah. my name wrong. Oh, really? So running Man, they called me Robin. Oh. And then on another show, they called me John. Yeah. And I'm like, since when was I John? <laughs> Well, they didn't even bother get, actually getting your proper yeah, name. Never. I've done more than 50 dramas. Okay. Like just one or two lines and stuff, but I've never received, I must almost never have my name right. Oh, that must uh, really screw up your IMDb or. Yeah, IMDb is like, I've got multiple names, multiple things. Yeah. And I've been trying to like bring them all into one profile, but yeah. I haven't bothered yet. So. Uh, is it so maybe your your lack of celebrity popularity is you being kind of like lazy or um, uh, pro procrastinating or personally? Yeah. I said to myself, if I get, become a regular on mm -hmm. a show, because yeah. there's a lot of people who do what I do, yeah. you know, do one day shoots and stuff like that like mm -hmm. we do. But if I I said to myself, if I ever become a regular on a show, yeah, then I'm going to like chase up everything, get everything on Naver, mm -hmm. which is the Korean internet system and things like yeah. that. And if you type in someone's name, it just brings up the whole actor profile. Yes, things yes. Things like that. So I said I'll follow follow up on that if I ever become a regular on any show. Is there a, is there like a show that you would like to like? What's your ideal show? Oh, comedy stuff. Comedy stuff. Yeah. So. Like, would you want to be one of the, like, uh, the comedy, like, right now, the common trend of shows you see is, like, mukbang, like, a mixture of, like, the mukbang, like, the eating shows. and uh -huh. I don't mind, I don't mind anything as long as it's not serious. But these yeah. days, a lot of the foreigners are invited to, like, serious topics and mm -hmm. serious stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, my worst experience in Korea. Yeah. yeah, okay. Oh, no, not the worst, but one of the most horrible things was um, I got invited to a show. <laughs> And they told me it's about to talk about China. Okay. And I'm like, okay. And is there a script and things like that? This is the kind of things you have to check for, yeah, before yeah. you go. Like, what are we going to talk about? Can you let me know the questions? Things like that. Mm -hmm. And then they said, we just want to hear your opinions on China. Right. And I'm like, okay, it's kind of weird, but all right. But, uh, you so have went, that, but that's also a volatile subject, like in Asia too. Like if you mention China and then like Taiwan and not China. China, Taiwan, you'll like all the net the Chinese netizens will attack. No, you. this was like even worse. This was like, oh, we want to know why Australia hates Asians. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was literally how they okay dealt with it. So the first question was, why does Australia hate China so much? Why mm -hmm. does Australia hate Chinese people so much? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, we don't hate Chinese. Mm -hmm. Have you been to Australia? It's, yeah, it's like you had really, a there's prime a minister that spoke stuff Chinese. Like that. Yeah, yeah, and it's like it's like there's a lot of Asians and blah blah blah. It's like and you know it's super international mm -hmm. it's like toronto Australia. Yeah, yeah so then uh you know and i like personally i love china and i've yeah. never i've checked i went online before yeah. i came here i checked reddit checked yeah. everything i can't find a single negative comment about china it's like they're yeah, just trying just, to get you to stop yeah. the fires and then when i said that then he started like coming like like getting angry is like, but Australians are the most racist people in the world. You should apologize on behalf of all white people of what you've done to Koreans. <laughs> you know, started going like this. And it was a live show and it was national. Yeah. And he started like getting more and more like this. And he went on for like 45 minutes like this. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. And then the, there was like two other foreigners there. They're like, what is going on? Right. And then he would just, he just like, he worked himself up like this. And I he think like, he had like a mixed agenda. Maybe he went yeah. on vacation. And then luckily, like, because I people could, were like, on, hey, where are you from from China? He's like, I'm Korean. And like, yeah, it just, one of those it just happened too, like, and he's just like too many times. It, yeah, and he's just letting it out all on me. Yeah. And, um, but he was just like, full, like, trying to like catch me out and things like mm -hmm. that. And I was, at the same time, I was getting like late live hate comments on my thing. What? And then like, if you you need to apologize now on behalf of all white people, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, 
but I was like really careful with what I say. So yeah, yeah, and I managed to get out of it. Well, thank God, but man. That's happened like multiple yeah. times. Wow, that, it's that's horrible, man. That, yeah. that they they like they they set you up for a trap, basically. Yeah. So then, luckily, like I remember because I did acting training, and yeah. my one of my teachers was telling me if you're ever in this kind of situation, mm -hmm. you have to be more accurate with what you say. Yeah. And so the more politically sensitive the topic gets, mm -hmm. you have to be more accurate with what you say and yeah. be careful, like, that you don't take any sides and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And you know, like, she gave me all this training. So when yeah. I was on, when I was there, I was like, you know, yeah, I didn't even try to change the topic. I just kept talking about, you know, uh, some of the best foods in Australia mm -hmm. are from Thai Thailand mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, Vietnam. And mm -hmm. we receive like a lot of Vietnamese refugees because it's just one like right. it's just across the ocean from the boat mm -hmm. so australia has some of the best viet food in the world mm -hmm. and you know i when i grew up i was i did because i studied pharmacy mm -hmm. and in my pharmacy class there was on, uh, only five non-asian people in the whole class right. so i've always been the minority <laughs> so, okay yeah. and that's the kind of thing i have to i had to say and then he just like he was getting more and more frustrated because he's like <laughs> not setting it right set up the thing yeah and in retrospect, I sort of just walked off set, but oh well, that's even yeah 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 like kind of I have I don't know what I probably would have fucked up in that situation because like obviously in my mind like I would less is more and to be give like a vague answer like they'll just keep drilling you but you you just have to keep stated but my problem is like I just oh, like give too much information and that would have just been fodder for this guy to attack me more yeah so it's like it's a really tricky situation and it was all in Korean as well yeah yeah. And it was live, so yeah. it's not even like going to be edited to make me look polite. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So, but then, yeah, I survived all that. Thank you. Yeah, so, what, you've done like, yeah, the panel show, the celebrity thing, and you've done the acting. Now. Like, what? which one would you rather, like, I guess I asked you what would your ideal, like, panel show, like, but like, would you rather be, would you rather be doing acting here? Or would you just like to be doing these conversation, these talk shows? Uh, I like comedy. Yeah. So if I if it's talk show, I want to be more lighthearted. Yeah. And more, you know. I guess yeah. Like funny. no, yeah, no, yeah. Going back, you're always coming. So I guess yeah, for you to express your character more, the the these personal shows where you can actually show talk off the brain and actually make make a the a tight situation more humorous is better suited for you yeah so i feel like the only point of entertainment is for healing yeah okay. and if you're not giving healing there's just no point okay yeah. if you want to know what's happening in some country then just read the news and okay you don't need to have okay. a talk show and listen to two people's opinions about it i don't yeah. but if you want if you need if you had like a bad day and yeah. you need healing mm -hmm. the, one of the only ways you can't read the news you can't mm -hmm. do anything you just need some sort of entertainment mm -hmm. and so that's why i think comedy is like really important okay um so how about some of like so you have like a lot of experience it seems like with these panel shows what advice could you give to people that are like right now in korea that want to bridge their themselves to that situation for people who want to be on shows yeah 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 it's just a matter of um speaking korean really well mm -hmm. and they want to be shocked with your pronunciation mm -hmm. with your fluency you mm -hmm. have to sound as natural as possible mm -hmm. so even if you're not that natural mm -hmm. you have to do things like practice the lines mm -hmm. and they give you a lot yep if you they don't give you lines write stuff down make mm -hmm. your own script yep you can write two or three pages of it and just keep memorizing keep saying it so that your lips make it feel natural and then you're just flowing it out yeah on set yeah because like mo uh I've, you're probably going to be like episode 22 23 or uh, like oh. mid 20s can i be 0 0.5 was well, i think we've already done episode one yeah but just a 0 0.5 <laughs> okay well okay well like uh, well, what point five on that but like a lot of the people i've uh, sat down and interviewed like they are they're trying to break in or they've been in the the field for a couple of years now but what's happened is they've kind of like been typecast they've been put in these roles like a lot of them are just background act actors and they don't know how to even get these speaking roles or these good lines or like even that like they might get a speaking role but it never really evolves to anything do you think it's better to be a do you want my deep 
Yeah, yeah, I got it. <laughs> really? It is like, I don't think anyone in Korea talks about this. Yeah. So you're getting really unique content watching this episode. Yeah. So there's, this is how I explain it to people. There's three worlds of foreign entertainment here. Okay. One is the Bangsong, the uh, TV shows. Yep. The talk shows and things like that. Yep. And those people will do those talk shows. They just... It's okay. Sorry, I just spilled some water. My... You want to start again? No, no, go okay. ahead. Okay, <laughs> Bang, so world number one. So the first world is the Bangsong people. Yep. It's like the talk show people. They uh, just uh, become famous based on their Korean speaking ability. Yep. And a lot of those guys wish they knew how to get into the movies and dramas mm -hmm. and how to do commercials. Right. But they don't really get invited into commercials and things like that most of the time. Mm -hmm. And they get paid average. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, then there's another world. Mm -hmm. That's the model, the modeling yeah. world. And you can, I think you've had some of them on this show as well. Yeah. And so they would, they work with the modeling agencies. Um, they get paid the most mm -hmm. out of everyone. And they also have the biggest cuts mm -hmm. as well. Um, and they don't really need much acting ability. They don't need much Korean speaking mm -hmm. ability. But out of the three groups, they get paid the most. Yeah. Then there's the drama and movie people. Yeah. Who are often outdoors, mm -hmm. who are doing long shoots, 16 hour shoots, 20 hour shoots. They're either the background act actors, like mm -hmm. the extras, or they get one line and they get slightly upgraded. Yeah. Uh, and there's hardly any people that get main roles. And even if you get main roles, the cut is so they take the agencies take such a yeah. massive cut. Yeah, yeah. And then so a lot of them want to know how do I get into commercials to get paid more, mm -hmm. or how do I get into TV shows to get paid more? Yeah. And there's not many people like us mm -hmm. who are just float around between the different genres. Well, for me, this is like for the last month, this is kind of like. Uh, Frustrating for me. Uh, it's fucking frustrating because, uh, like, I have yeah, I have friends like in all three, uh, all three genres. But yeah, and I float around to, uh, those. We're actually the rare ones. Yeah, the ones that can float around the genres. Yeah, we're the fl I so I float around, but the, uh, but my the people in like each different uh, land or sorry category you said, they're always like, going, oh wow, I'm jealous of you because you have like this individual look. They like that and like but then, like. And they're like more, they say, oh, I'm just kind of, I just have a typical face and I'm just, uh, I'm always, I'm just hired to like stand either like for a photo shoot or in the background or just give a lot. To, yeah. Like be a soldier. And like, so I, I, I always get, they're like, I get typecast just on my appearance alone, but you have this individual look, you're able to, you have, yeah, you, know, you have some talent. So I'm jealous of you. But then I'm like sitting at home like five days a week, uh, like, no, like probably four weeks a month just, just without getting really anything working and then finally waiting for this opportunity for this unique role, this specialized role that might be in one of these three categories. Yeah, so that's the thing. So um, if you when they want someone for the TV shows, mm -hmm. the Korean speakers, yeah. they always go to them first yeah. and then they go to us later. Yeah. And then when they want people for commercials, they always yeah. go to the commercial people first, the yeah. models first, stuff like that. They always yeah. go to us later. Yeah. And then the same with the movies and stuff like that. Uh, so then the, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm 42 now. How old are you? Uh, secret. Okay. Secret. Anyway. So you're, you're right. We're around maybe we're eighties babies, I guess. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Uh, but the problem is like, uh, what happens for me? I might like see a casting and they're looking for 40 something. I apply and then they say, Oh, sorry, you look too young, but then, okay. Do you like uh, so I, I had to explain this and I yeah. said this to some of the other actors as well. It's all about image. It's yeah. not about acting ability yeah. in Korea. And so they'll even get like tourists off the street yeah. just based on the image. Yeah. So when they want a prof like a professor, yeah. the they want the stereotype, mm -hmm. the stereotypical professor. So that's like white beard, crazy mm -hmm. hair, old. Obviously in real life, there's a lot of like 30 year old professors and 50, 40 year old professors, but they want people who are like 50. But then when they say 50, you have the photos you show yeah. can't be like, you with dyed, well, like, I, dyed I, hair and everything like that. But like they say 40, they're looking for 40. I submit my, my I, I contact them and then they say, sorry, you look too young. 
uh, you can't, you're not that. And then when I see like, oh, we're looking for 30 something that like, I submit my stuff like, going, oh, actually you're too old for this. Cause we actually know your actual age. I'm like, going, which one is it? Am I too young? Am I too old? And this is very hypocritical. We live in Korea, the plastic surgery capital of Asia, yeah. where there's people like applying like facial cream to reduce their ages and their cream. I know like 55 year olds. That was, I've, I've explained that to a lot of uh, foreign actors. Yeah. So if you want to, you have to choose yeah. an image. Mm -hmm. You can't have like in between image. Yeah. So if you want uh, like mother roles yeah. in commercials, yeah. there's so many like foreign mother roles. Mm -hmm. But then if you want that, you shouldn't submit pictures of you with full youthful makeup that yeah. you look like you're 20. Mm -hmm. That's like AI yeah. generated or anything like that. You want to have like slightly messy hair. Mm -hmm. You want to look like slightly tired. Mm -hmm. So I literally tell people go go take photos with bad lighting, <laughs> submit for those roles, and you get oh, okay, them. okay. Or like if you're, the, uh, I met some other uh, actors who were in their forties mm -hmm. and they were dyeing their beard, mm -hmm. and they were dyeing their hair because they hated white hair. Yeah, and they were when they took photos as well, they tried to get rid of all the like the wrinkles and stuff yeah. like that. And I told them, oh, then you won't get many roles yeah. because you'll be a forty year old that looks like thirty. You'll be yeah. stuck in these images. So he stopped dyeing his hair. Yeah, and his beard, yeah. and he got the strip, like, like, like this weird white, white, you know, beard, like strangling yeah. Einstein, yeah, yeah, yeah like okay. Einstein stuff, like salt and pepper or whatever, yeah, uh, salt and pepper, that yeah. sounds good, yeah. And then uh, and his hair, he took messy photos mm -hmm. instead of like doing it properly. He just did yeah. like slightly messy, and then just an influx of roles come in, okay, because there's uh, so much less competition in the. 50 year old roles mm -hmm. and 60 year old roles. Mm -hmm. And there's so many professor roles. Yeah. Uh, general, general roles. Yeah. But yeah, like, so like, there'll be like father role. I like often I'll see like a, a for like a drama or a shoot, like we need a father role and I'm, I apply, but they always just pick the same, like uh, six foot two, like uh, like high cheekbone, masculine guy. Yeah. I'm like, well, I look like a father. But the I'm thing a, is, what you have to remember is... But this... I, I'm, I'm actually more of the goofy uncle. That's, I guess, that I always class my side, classify yeah. myself as that. Well, the thing you have to remember is that uh, there's not audition. There's hardly any auditions yeah. in Korea. It's just yeah. done by image. Yeah. They, the agency will send your photo mm -hmm. to the director. Yeah. I've done it many times as well. I've been involved in casting. I've yeah. sent like 40 photos to the director. Yeah. And they just look on Kakato. They scroll through the photos. Yeah. They're like, I want this one, this one, and this one. They send three photos back to me. And they say, can you tell them to come on Saturday? Yeah. The, even the audition thing. Like if you go uh, in, a, in the States, an audition, you you go to the, you're at the audition room and you're in a room filled with people that look very similar to you. In the States it is. Yeah. Like in the here, States it's here, it's like every shape and size and every yeah. nationality. So then, but if, yeah. So then they'll pick people based on the image, not yeah. on the acting ability. Yeah. Because there's just this general consensus that foreigners can't act. Yeah. Even though there's a lot of good actors in Korea. Yeah, I, I've, there are a lot of good actors, but I uh, I don't really want to go deep in it, but it feels like even the Korean entertainment field, they don't actually even want to push like uh, foreign talent because it, it seems like too domestic. It's still, like, because obviously like a lot of the actors don't get paid a lot. Like we, we don't, we get, we get the shit into the stick because everyone steals the money yeah. from us. And so, so we like our, t even though we might be talented, like our, the money that we've made is so low. So it's not even seen like commercial, like internationally. These are like talented people. Yeah. Well, in um, one of the biggest problems in Korea is that the agencies take 50% of everything mm -hmm. you make. Yeah. So, and then you can take so many examples, but yeah. if you see a foreigner, on a Korean drama, yeah. you guaranteed that they're paying almost half of what any other Korean actor is getting yeah. on the show. So that's like unfair anyways. Yeah. So uh, I met someone who's a fully trained actor from London mm -hmm. and she was like beautiful, everything like that. Yeah. And she, uh, she's trained in the Shakespearean Academy. Mm -hmm. So she is the highest level actor. Yeah. And she's, she came here about five years ago. She wanted to be here. Mm -hmm. And then when she finds out that the roles were so low paid mm -hmm. and that the agencies 
take 50 percent and then yeah. the, normally the agencies are introduced by another agency mm-hmm. that would that taking 50 yeah yeah there's like well. so many middlemen that are taking a little piece of the pie yeah, yeah. so uh in the case of like Bijong yeah the there was an agency that says oh i'll get you onto the show mm-hmm. but i take 50 percent of everything you make mm-hmm. and then there was another agency that introduces that agency that yeah. also take 50 percent yeah so they were supposed to get you know 800 to a yeah. thousand per episode yeah so the first right. agency takes 500 the next agency takes 250 yeah. then so basically when you watch the show almost everyone on the show is getting 250 per episode yeah i which heard is that a yeah. thousand a month yeah i heard that yeah even some of the people like you know, the 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 lies that they were fed for that i was like well, oh yeah the pay is low but this is a really great opportunity this will open up so many doors for you to get more money yeah but then the problem is the good people the good actors the ones yeah. that know because in America, the most you can take is ten percent yeah. legally, and then uh, in Australia as well, in, yeah, in Canada, in Canada, Canada as well. Yeah. So in most of the developed industries, you can take maximum ten percent, maybe twenty yeah. percent, if you like really hate someone. Well, yeah, that's uh, like that would be your agent because they're looking out for the best, like so the they they're looking out for the best of their clients so yeah they want to know they know all the money so they get it they uh, they sign a contract with their client so they get 10 percent. so they have to they make sure that all the money goes to the actor so then the actor could give them the money yeah yeah exactly. so yeah so it's a it's a three p it's just a three party thing like basically each party the production the actor and the agent are all working the best the agent's trying to get the most money from the production so the production can give it to the ac- actor and then the actor can give it to the agent so uh, yeah that's so, that's how it works but yeah. in here uh all those good actors they yeah. experience that they run away yeah they go back they like leave the country yeah. pretty much and then it's just people who it, especially, seem, especially, it seems like the the industry the korean industry is uh okay with just being their re- of revolving door of okay talent and then even like but unfortunately some of the 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 good talent gets caught in this this whole machine and gets sp- eat up and spat out very quickly. Yes, but the, it's not just it's not that they're okay with it. They want good acting. Yeah, and then the director is paying the thousand dollars. Yeah, it's just that these like middlemen and mm-hmm. all these agencies mm-hmm. are taking like fifty percent mm-hmm. and threatening to kick people out of the country if mm-hmm. they don't pay the fifty yeah. percent. Well, yeah, that's a disgusting thing. Yeah, too. Yeah, and it's all like illegal all around the world but yeah. it's just here it's just like yeah people are getting away with it mm-hmm. and it's just getting more it's getting worse it's getting worse so now there's getting... this influx of like career boost like yeah. all these like 20 year old girls and guys who mm-hmm. love korea and the other month um so like seven eight years ago if you did a music video yeah we used to get like 400 for the night yeah or 800 for the night so yeah like i'm getting music videos yeah i get like like there's i've done this year, maybe seven or eight music videos, and it's all been like 500. I have one coming up uh, in uh, 10 days, 800. Yeah, and but now, the last month, they were, they filled up a shoot with 50 foreigners, yeah. all girls, yeah. all willing to do it for free. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they were like, oh, I just want to be on a music video. Oh, yeah. it's my dream. And then uh, one of my friends, one of another agency I know, uh, she filled up a whole movie, Korean movie, yeah, with people who are willing to do it for free. Yeah, uh, like some of the, I've talked to some of these people, and they're just fucking idiots. It pisses me off because they're going, "Oh, I wanted like I I did this drama for free because I wanted you know I wanted a credit, I wanted to get my foot in the door." But I'm like, "What? Well, you realize you're hurting the whole industry by ta- by offering a free service. You're be- basically being a a slave." Yeah, and now like going forward, that that production won't will then just keep looking for free talent or paying very poorly fifty dollars for 12 hours it's the expression like cutting off your nose to spite your face you want to get into the industry but then you're ruining it at the same time yeah but a lot of them would now say like oh i really wanted to meet the celebrity Mm -hmm. i wanted to be on set to meet you know see that celebrity from far away and i was just like oh my god and now it's getting so much worse yeah so instead of like there being fair pay yeah. or, you know, any sort of protections, now it's just like taking it's the wild west. Of it's the wild west. Yeah. So a lot of the famous shows on yeah. TV, the TV shows that you yeah. see foreigners that travel and things like that, is all unpaid now. Oh, really? Yeah. 
Oh, I have like a friend that's uh, doing something overseas, I think, for a Korean thing. I, and it might be on, uh, like unpaid or... Or it's like really low paid, like Oh, like $100 a day or something. $100 a day, and they, but they get to travel and like, yeah, like, and accommodation and all Yeah. that kind of food. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, so it's just getting worse. And they're just like, we're number one. You came to our country. <laughs> That's literally what, all I'm hearing now. It's like... Yeah, it's I'm I'm kind of getting frustrated with it because it's just it feel it's this is an up uphill fight Yeah. and So, yeah, it's just one of those things. yeah and Yeah. it's it's also like even like the the at foreign acting community it's uh, a lot of the people are out for themselves Yeah. so like like you ask a friend like oh like on oh I'm doing this amazing mute like this opportunity like on oh cool like on I've never got an offer who are you working with. Uh, I'd rather not say. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they don't. They don't want to share their uh, their contacts Yeah. too. No, I've I've experienced a lot worse Yeah, than that for yeah, the foreign that but community. like yeah, it took me like even. Uh, I wanted to get into the industry like very early, and unfortunately, I had like no one would share like a contact with me. Uh, the way I had to break into the industry, which hurt my my reputation, is I had to do surprise basically. Yeah. And like, so like, okay, so I did surprise and then like, I got to meet some people and then also like kind of like through that, like following them on Facebook and when they tag someone else, I go, oh, that's an agent. Okay. Still that contact. I had to be like, Yeah. like, I uh, like very like espionage, like, and steal contacts from people Yeah, and then figure which out isn't the game. normal. Yeah. It's not normal way to do it. Yeah. Normal way is that your agency gets all the jobs for Yeah. you. Yeah. And they'll contact you. Yeah. And that's the whole reason they take 50% of whatever you make is that they're the ones supposed to get the jobs for you. Yeah, the, but the, it's not that way. There's a lot of agencies that just sell their visa and then take a percentage off that and Of don't everything even you make. Yeah. and don't even try to even find you work. Yeah. So that's one of the biggest issues in the industry. And that's why you get all the good actors Mm run hmm away. mm hmm And then uh, you get new actors who don't know any better. mm hmm And then they, uh, they just go, oh, I'm here on tourist visa. Yeah. I'm just here on holidays. I just want to experience it one time for fun. Yeah, two episodes ago, I like I interviewed a a girl, um, yeah, uh, Luna. If if you want to go back, she had been, basically been in the month, uh, Korea for like six months. She's she was very stressed out because she was finding it hard to find work because her company wasn't giving her any jobs, and also she had to pay her company for like two, I think like two million for her visa just to get that. And so there's. So she was, I was just like, oh, you poor, oh no, you fell for, she fell for every little. Yeah, and we, I keep telling people, but then they just say, oh no, you're just being in Korea too long. It's Yeah. like, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like, and then, but there's so many of those types of people, literally hundreds Yeah. every month. Yeah. Well, And if they get a show, yeah. they're like, oh, I'm going to be famous. I'm set for life. And then they stay for a couple more years. <laughs> and then, yeah. Anyway, so my advice for every foreigner is never, ever, ever make acting your main thing. Always uh, do something else Mm hmm as your main thing and then do acting on the side. Mm hmm Yeah. Otherwise, 100% of all people will go crazy. Yeah. Well, I'm doing that right now and I'm going crazy. And Yeah, like, you I... have to do something else. And someone that was someone else's advice to me Yeah. like eight, nine years ago Yeah. is you do something else uh, that... It, even if it's not paid, Yeah. it's something else that just distracts you, like a project. Yeah. So if you want to make a music album or Yeah. work on a YouTube video, or um, for me, I make, I made board games and I worked on a business. Yeah. And so I would just build up my board game, sell it online, Mm build -hmm. up board games, sell it online. And then if jobs come in, then I, I do those jobs. Mm -hmm. Right. So your advice is like, yeah, you have to do acting, but also something that doesn't really have a fixed schedule, but it can also be an alternative form of income. Yeah. Like, Even if it's got a fixed schedule, you can do like one, one, one day or two days a week. And yeah. So I've met, I've met, um, Some foreigners who like a professor at university, they work full time for three months and then they have three months off. Then they work full time for three months and then they have three months off. Mm -hmm. So during the three months off, they just like start applying for so many acting roles. They Yeah. do Mm all the acting stuff Mm and then uh, they still paid by the university during those three months. -hmm. So then they do all this acting stuff as well. Mm They, -hmm. they make a lot of money during those three months and then they take uh, three months off acting and then they do all their teaching stuff for three months and stuff like that. Or I've met people who are like, they 
like for example, Bijong Samhedan. Yeah. Most of them were working full time in companies. Yeah. And they that's why the shoot was on Sundays. Mm -hmm. So they do the thing, they do the shoot, they do the shoot. And, but the ones that sit there waiting for the script, mm -hmm. and then the script comes in, and then they're like, oh, why is it coming in at 8 p.m.? Mm -hmm. What am I supposed to do? And mm -hmm. things like that. They're the ones that slowly go crazy. Mm -hmm. And it's just too much, yeah. too, okay. too much stress. So then other thing is the payment issues. Yeah, Half the time, payment doesn't come in within one month. Yeah. No, the norm is about three months. So yeah. that's about average. And most Koreans don't consider that a bad thing mm. because uh, the first company has to pay the second company and they have a monthly schedule. Mm -hmm. Then the second company has to pay the agency and they mm -hmm. have a monthly schedule. Mm -hmm. And then the agency has to pay you. Yeah. So the only time the agency pays you with a month if, is if they have a lot of savings that they pay out. Yeah. But yeah, then yeah. they're taking a risk because if they pay out, then they're risking not getting the money from the initial company. Yeah, and as well as like you, even when it gets to like two months, three months, and they still haven't paid you, where you're saying, "Hey, I did this. When's money?" They like going, "Oh, and I haven't got it yet from you know the the first the people that actually have the money." Yeah, or like what, or from whoever gave them like gave the middle the middleman above me yet and they they don't they don't even want to pressure that person because they don't want to build up a bad relationship yeah so that's what happens is then you argue yeah with the agency you say yeah. where's my pay it's been yeah. six months yeah it's happened to lots of times yeah and then they'll say uh i'm not using you again you're you're so rude to me yeah. and you're angry and then you're just out of the list forever yeah like so I that's was... that's the whole reason why there's constant stream of fresh people coming in yeah and not being paid yeah, and the yeah yeah like i had like a like there was a i was like doing research like finding out like what payment and there was a time someone said they paid me and they didn't like the, they didn't pay me and i like i contacted them they're like oh let me contact the financial uh, department and then the financial department they have to go back and back and forth in in the office and then they're like oh the office said that they paid you i'm like going Okay, I'm uh, like when I have to then go to my agent. Oh, they said they paid you, and they said, "Well, we didn't get the money." You go back and like, okay. Then I have to talk to the casting agent. He has to talk financial. They said, "Oh, we sent these two things," and then like, "Oh, we only got one of those. We got we sent we it was like two people. It was they were supposed to pay for two people, but they only paid for one person. So tell them they only paid for one person." I'm like, well. Uh, it's such a headache. Yeah, yeah, and it's not none of it's your fault. Yeah. But the more you chase it up, yeah. the more you're ruining relationships. Yeah. So then uh, they were like, "I don't want to use him. He's too much trouble." Yeah. He asked for his money within six months. Yes, <laughs> that's literally what they say. Yeah. And then they'll find fresh new people. Yeah, and then uh, especially these days, there's so many new people coming in, mm -hmm. and they're all of them. It will keep experiencing the same yeah. thing. They're unpaid. I mean, like the, we could talk like for an hour more about this because it's such a horrible oh, yeah. thing. But like right now, we're at like fifty minutes, so I think we should just kind of. I know, but it's it's just I keep everything around an hour, so. Yeah. Okay. But it's just you know like it's such a like the the industry. It's like, like all like people are saying, but oh, man. Like, but anyways, people, my... yeah, yeah. People ask for, like like we're trying to encourage the whole community to ask for money. But then, you know, it's still like some people that are given the advice are the talented ones and they say, oh, I got this much for the like the Samsung job. Yeah. I got eight million. And then someone's like, going, oh, I guess so. I should ask always for eight million. But I'm like, but you're still kind of new to the thing and you don't have the developed skills as this person. You shouldn't be like asking for equal pay for someone that's been in the industry for so long has actually developed their skills. Well, uh, one of the things is that you, like one of the issues and my, this was my point and i'll just wrap it up like yeah. this the reason there's bad actors yeah is because the new people keep getting the roles yeah and they will have neg negative experiences yeah after a while they start building out experiences but yeah. they've already had so many bad experiences that they leave yeah and then they've and set and then, and then, then someone else come. fills and that person still has yeah uh uh, not as much experience and is a bad, might be a bad actor. Yeah, so because of the business side of the industry yeah. and so many unpaid people and so many people cheated, yeah. that the good actors keep leaving or yeah. the people who built up their experience keep leaving and yeah. then still new people yeah. uh, who have less than six yeah. months of acting experience who just really awkward on TV. Yeah, asking, on for, asking for the same money as the, ta as the good actors. But well, really. 
besides the fact of money, it's just that then they run away, then the they, next people it, it, come it, it, in, and the next yeah. people run away, yeah. and it's just this constant uh, uh, cycle, yeah, cycle, a cycle of like people inex inexperienced people. Yeah, I feel yeah, they're like, they're kind of like poisoning the well, and then the, like leaving, and then the, the, like every every uh, poor actor that come, the inexperienced person that comes in, kind well, of the, worsens the reputation. No, it's more like uh, if you're treated well, yeah, then you start building up your acting mm -hmm. career. Almost no one can act well straight away. Mm -hmm. They need like one or two years of mm -hmm. experience and then three, four years of experience in your acting gets okay. better. Your TV show skills get better. Your yeah. Korean gets better. Yeah. You uh, you get less nervous. Mm -hmm. You're like funnier, blah, blah, yeah. blah. And then as you build up more and more experience, then you're like really good. But the problem is people like do a little bit and then they leave. They mm -hmm. do uh, then because they treat it like so badly nature, yeah. it's like you the best actors not being paid so yeah. then they just leave yeah and then the uh the people who build up experience give up after five years and mm -hmm. they leave yeah etc cetera, etc cetera. but and then there's the they don't have a choice yeah. if, except to use these new fresh people yeah who don't have any experience they have any experience yeah because i noticed like like uh some all these uh offers i i see like for even like good money they, uh, I like, okay, oh, they well, we have like a Samsung tab or, you know, an LG computer. Like I see the offers I apply and they, they say, okay, you're on the short list. And then I never, and then they're sorry they decided to go with another actor. I don't, I don't, I never see those commercials cut, like be really advertised because I'm, I'm like going, oh, they probably just went with someone younger and then a less experienced person because they were cheaper. But then the commercial probably was garbage and they just... Oh, they pushed it for maybe two weeks and then just pulled it. Yeah, because the acting was bad. Yeah, or something yeah, like that. yeah you see a lot of yeah. The, the the advertising vision was not as as it was much larger than the talent that they chose to portray it. Well, you can see a lot of that in in TV. I mean, in uh, TV shows. Yeah. And dramas as well, yeah. movies. Yeah. They will get like some actor. Yeah. I saw. For in twenty twenty nineteen. Yeah. There was some American guy. Who came, and he said, "I'm a famous actor in America," and he's and he wasn't. Mm -hmm. And then he that movie's out, by the way. He got three of the biggest foreigner roles I've ever seen in yeah. Korea within three months. Yeah, and he got three different movies. Yeah, and I was like, "Wow, so interesting! I didn't even know this was possible." And then uh, I watched him on set, and he's just like this, and he was like shaking from fear. Yeah, and he's so nervous, everything like that. We watched the movie; is he's completely edited out of it. He's, he's like in a less than ten seconds of screen uh, time. Because you and I, it, okay, the the it's the, you and I also did like some background uh, recording for the voice of it, and we were watching him on screen. And there was this like he he lied. He padded his resume completely, and there was supposed to be this action scene, and everyone's like running. And like you could tell, like who was actually like they hired all these professional athletes to do it, and then there's him just going, like, oh. yeah. He did. He didn't even have any like he he was supposed to be like yeah a professional run like yeah. and the whole the whole thing comes down to if you just audition people, yeah. Yeah. you would see that he gets nervous. Yeah, but he got three roles and he got paid twenty thousand dollars per role. Yeah. And he's been edited out completely. Yeah. So those three production companies say, no, we're not using any more foreigners. Yeah. So, yeah. It's... And it's literally like that. But then there's us with like a decade of experience and yeah. we just sit on the side. I'm horrible watching. at auditions. We're but... watching far away going like, oh, what is he doing? Yeah. Who is this person? Yeah. I'm horrible at auditions, but like, because I don't really have the view. We're just seeing the script. So I can't envision it, and that it's been and often like they say, "Oh no, do it a different way." And so I'm like, I get flustered. But then when I'm on set, I'm like, I always get like claps. I don't want to clap in front of the mic because it it blows out the sound. Yeah. But yeah, like oh, that's exactly what we want, and like, but yeah, what? But I can't really. I don't if I don't know the role, if I don't can't feel the atmosphere in the audition room, the blank yeah. room. I, I I I just drop it. It's like doing a school test. Yeah. But when like actually on like in reality on the set, I get actually compliments. Like wow, good job. Yeah. And like on good job next. <laughs> like I but like I see other people. Ng, ng like going good. Okay. Every time every time yeah. I do a take, I get okay. Next take. Okay. Let's yeah. move it. That's why we call them one takers. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, thank you very much for. Uh, 
joining me on Rice Camera Action. Uh, yeah. Do you want to plug your social media or anything? Uh, yeah, you can find me online on uh, Romino Go. Okay, Romino Go. <laughs> yeah, that's me on Instagram. Okay. And so, yeah, if you'd like to send me a message. Yeah, and follow me on my Instagram and other social media at Comedy Jeffy. Uh, thank you guys very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.